In our last video, we talked about the anthropological origins of laughter and its social function. Today, we take a look at more subtle forms of humour, including pun and wordplay. Welcome to The Christian Filmmaker. Laughing means, as we said last time, publicly downgrading or downranking someone seemingly unworthy of his position. This also includes downgrading or altogether abandoning a thought or an idea that seemed worthy of our attention for a split second before we realize that it is utter nonsense. Let's take a look at this moment from Charlie Chaplin's The Circus, for instance. As he is cleaning the goldfish bowl, we unsuspectingly follow along until we realize that what he does makes no sense. It's like in that famous old wordplay, time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like bananas, where we have to readjust our understanding of the word flies and connected with the fruit to form the term fruit flies. Halfway through computing the sentence in our minds, we realize that we have sent it the wrong pathway into our brain, where we would have stored it as a meaningful thought. But now we have to retract it and shake it off, for it is utter nonsense. Again, there is bad news for Christian filmmakers who want to make a comedy. Funny things occur when the sublime clashes with the all too mundane. For instance, in Woody Allen's Love and Death, the main character complains that God does not reveal himself. If only God would speak to me, if he would just say one word, if he would just cough. So here we have a serious existential utterance, as we find it in many an Ingmar Bergman movie. But the idea of God coughing from the heavens above renders the whole notion ludicrous. As they say, the sublime and the laughable exist very close next to each other. With most puns and wordplays, it's always the same. You have somebody who means to say something awe-inspiring and somebody who takes every metaphor literally. Let's take an example from Ernst Lubitsch's masterpiece To Be or Not To Be. It's a comedy about a serious topic, the Nazi invasion of Poland in 1939. The main character happens to be a pompous Polish actor who finds a stranger in his and his wife's bed after coming home one night. He doesn't know that this man works for the Polish resistance and that his wife provided a hideout from the Nazis. So the actor wakes him up and a pun-ridden dialogue ensues. When the actor loudly demands to know what's happening, the young man shushes him, saying, Shh, not so loud, after all, we're all in the same boat. The use of this phrase triggers the actor's cynicism by extending the metaphor. So from one sailor to the other, let me ask you, what ill wind blew you into my slippers? Again, a solemn utterance is mismatched with a literal, ridiculous one. We can even draw a chart that displays the structure of the inherent conflict within any pun. At the center of our chart, we establish a phrase addressing something sublime. That phrase is owned by a serious agent. Then there's the other party making fun of that utterance by dragging it down to earth. All this is happening in the face of an actual conflict. Only one party takes it seriously, the other doesn't. By the way, any dramatic conflict can be analyzed in that fashion. This proves a very helpful tool when designing a scene, especially when you wish to turn a serious scene into a funny one. But for today, I have to move on. I'll show you next time. I hope you found my little suggestions insightful, 
See you next time and God bless.